Howdy, and this is just a short video on how to install Pop! OS for people that might want to do that in VirtualBox. So to start off, you need to download Pop! OS, nothing shocking. This is a version of Linux. It is one of my favorite versions of Linux. I like it a lot. And I will be using it now and again for my Python classes here on YouTube. So just click download on the website. I will make sure there's a link in the description to go to this. But if you go to download, you'll see you've got a bunch of options here. If you're going to install it in VirtualBox, you need download 22.04 LTS. Do not pick the one NVIDIA. Do not pick the one for Raspberry Pi. You want the one on top. Now, if you're going to install it to a laptop or to a desktop, which actually has NVIDIA graphics cards in it, select NVIDIA. But for things like VirtualBox, et cetera, you're good there with the uh, long-term. So 22.4 LTS, that help. Uh, we'll put in a little more than four gigabyte RAM, obviously a lot more than 16 gig of storage, but other than that, we're good. So I've already got it downloaded. We don't need to go download it again. Here's our VirtualBox. And when you go to make a new one, you want to click new on VirtualBox. So we just click up here on tools if it isn't already selected and then just go to new right there. Click. That'll give you your, what do you want to call this machine? We're just going to call it pop OS for video. You may call it whatever you wish if you wish to keep it. Stick it on a fast hard drive. If you have a choice, you want to pick the fastest hard drive you can, probably. I recommend highly a solid state drive because virtual machines love solid state drives as much as we love tacos here in Mexico. ISO image. This is where you pick the ISO that you just downloaded. Like I said, I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to pick other. And I'll go to where I store my ISOs right there. And I'll just pick the ISO that I downloaded and click open. That's it. Click next. Then I'm going to kick up my uh, memory to 8192 because I've got plenty of memory on this machine. So 8192. Do not go lower than 4 gig. 40, you know, don't go, go lower than 4 gig of memory. But 8192 just because I've got the memory to spare. And I'm going to kick my uh, cores up to six cores, six processors, basically. I could go higher, but I don't need to. I could go lower, but I don't need to. Again, I trust you to make your own judgment. If you can, always try and pick at least two. If you have no choice or you're on a slower machine or something that doesn't have a lot of cores or it's just a really slow machine, go ahead and do one. But honestly, it, if you can, try and kick it up to four to six or something, because that's actually really nice for the virtual machine. Like I said, I could go higher if I needed to, but I don't really need to. So click next. Oh, oh, before I forget, don't click on enable EFI unless you know you need to. So don't pick that unless you know you need to. Okay, click next. Virtual hard drive. We'll go ahead and pick 128 gigabytes. So 128 gig. Notice I do not select pre-allocate. I will go ahead and let it take up space as it needs to. I don't have enough space on my hard drive to just take up 128 gig. So I selected that, so I got plenty of room if I need it, but I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and not pre-allocate. So go ahead and click next once you've done that. You'll have a summary and click finish. And just to double check, if you want to just double check your settings, I'm just going to right click over here on my new little virtual machine I made and select settings. And you'll see you'll get this little dialog. Uh, I often will turn on the bi-directional shared clipboard so it'll go back and forth. You can also do bi-directional drag and drop. In this case, though, since it's Linux to Windows from my host, I don't really care that much about bi-directional drag and drop, but I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and turn on the shared clipboard. 
there's nothing really to do on system. Everything should be already set. Just double check that your number of processors is squared. Display, I usually like to kick up the memory a bit to whatever the max there is, 128 megabytes. Eh, I'll leave that one to you. Again, it's not a huge issue. Storage, don't need to do anything. Audio, I do leave the audio on. It won't hurt anything, I don't think, not in this scenario. Network, leave it at NAT unless you know that you need to change it to something else. Network address translation is what that stands for. And it'll do fine for what we're doing. Uh, you don't need to change any of the serial ports, don't need to change any of the USB, don't need to make any shared folders, and we don't need to mess with the user interface. So we are good to go. Just click OK. All right, we're good. Go ahead and double click that virtual machine that you just made, and that'll start it. It'll take a little bit. Not too long, though. Let it go ahead and run through its boot sequence. While it's doing this, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the main virtual box window there. We don't really need that for what we're doing right now. And it'll take a little bit while it starts its uh while it starts up. It doesn't take too long. Again, your mileage will vary depending on the machine that you're running it on. Virtual machines do like solid state drives. They do like RAM. And of course, they do like threads on a CPU. So the newer the machine you have and the faster you set it up to be, obviously, it's going to make a difference on the speed of the virtual machine. And it might be worthwhile to spend some money on a little more powerful machine so that if you're using a lot of VMs, it might be worth it. So there we are. We let it sit for a second just to let it kind of stabilize itself and let it bring up its installer if it can. There we go. So as you can see, the installer came up for us because it knows that because we downloaded the ISO, it knows that we're looking to install this. So we are all, we should already be ready to go. So install pop os i'm going to pick english instead of spanish uh i could go either way here but in this case we'll do english because that's what the video is so we'll do english select again pick the language that you're familiar with or that you want to use obviously united states perfectly reasonable for what we're doing click select english us for the keyboard it should detect the keyboard that you have and hopefully pick the right one Usually it does. So English US is the keyboard I have. So I'm going to click select. Input language should be English US and default. Looks good. Go ahead and click select for the keyboard again. And we'll do a clean install. We don't need to do anything fancy schmancy or nothing. So just click clean install and click that. It'll ask you which drive you wish to install on. As you can see, it's a 128 gig drive. So looking good. We'll click on that and erase and install. Again, it is a virtual machine. So cool beans. Click that. You'll need to give a username and full name. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly this. It's totally reasonable. So. I've got my full name, Jim Partial, and it gives, gives me a username, Jim Partial. So looking good. Click Next. Password. I'll leave it to you for what your password is. Mine's going to fail spectacularly, but this is just a temporary thing anyway. I usually use password one. Here, I'll write it this real quick so you can see. I usually use password one like that for any throwaway accounts. And I teach security, so people might be going, oh, giving up password. No, <laughs> nothing serious ever gets this password. This password is always used just for throwaway stuff. So it's something I don't care about if someone captures, because it's probably gonna go away anyway. It's a, it's something for the class, it's something to experiment with, It's it's a local thing. And password one with the capital P and the one matches most 
systems, password quality checks. If you need to, if you need to add a special character, you could always stick an exclamation point at the end or something. But anyway, long story short, password one is totally reasonable for what we're doing. So I'm going to click next. You may pick your own password if this is something that you think you're going to leave running or that you're going to leave using over and over again. You want to make sure. I'll leave that one to you. Now, here is another thing that I'm not going to do, though I would normally tell you to. I am not going to encrypt the drive. Normally, if this is something that is going to be left running, if this is something that's going to be my daily driver, something that I'm going to use for, say, a new project for a client where I'm actually doing data analysis or maybe a penetration test for a client or something, of course, I'll encrypt the hard drive if I'm going to do that. But in this case, we're going to not encrypt. So click Don't Encrypt, and it'll go through. Don't encrypt unless you really, really need to, because it'll take up all your hard drive. It'll take up all that space we set aside. And that's probably not what you want to do, especially for a throwaway account. Again, if I'm doing this for a client, if I'm making, if I'm doing a pen test, if I'm doing a data analysis project, or if I'm doing some kind of research project for them, I might very well use a great password and encrypt, but not in this case. This is a throwaway, just experimental virtual machine. All right, I'll speed this up so you don't have to sit and wait through it. So I'll be quiet now and speed it up for you. I'll be back on the other side. Okay, now all we have to do is restart. It actually doesn't take too long to copy all the files and stuff it needs over. So once that gets done, just make sure to click restart device. It'll take it a little bit to restart. Uh, don't let, if you haven't done the Linux gig before, don't let all that text when it goes to boot or shut down uh, throw you off. Linux tends to be more verbose in what it's doing than, say, Windows does. Windows likes to hide a lot of stuff from you. Linux doesn't hide as much. So don't let it throw you off. That's that's fine. It, this is not a bug. It's It's meant to do that. So it's good. So anyway, once it reboots, there you are. Let's go ahead and log in. You should see your whatever name you gave it. I'll click on that. And I'll type in my password that I entered, password one, and hit enter. So we pressed enter and it'll log us in. Now, it'll ask us a couple of questions just to kind of get us set up. I'm not going to change anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let the dock stay in the middle and extend to the edges as the normal default is. Click next. Top bar, we don't need to change anything. Just leave it alone. Click next. Uh, launcher, eh, I'll leave that one to you. But again, let's not change anything. Click next. Gestures are fine. If you have a laptop, it does support gestures. Go ahead and select next. Just click next. And I'm going to pick dark because I like dark. <laughs> I'll leave it to you. Some people like the light, but I prefer the dark. One thing, remember, dark is usually better for laptops. So if you have a laptop, it can be useful to use the dark because it should tech be less battery power. I can't tell you for sure, but it's common that that takes less battery power. Strangely, not always. <laughs> Click next. I'm going to turn on location services because I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about location services on this. It doesn't matter to me. Again, your mileage will vary. Some people really hate things seeing where they are and feel free to leave it off. I'll click next. Time zone. I'll pick where I'm at. So the time zone matches me. We're in basically central standard time. I'm in Puerto Vallarta, so Central Standard Time right there. Click Next. Don't care about online accounts. Click Skip. You can always do that later anyway. And we'll go ahead and select Start Using Pop! OS right there. So click on that. Now, it's installed. You know I'm going to tell you to do the updates because... When you first install an operating system, you really should update it immediately. Uh, it used to be in the old days, you didn't have to. 
But nowadays, the way modern operating systems are, for lack of better, made for download and made for distribution, it expects you to do that. And if you don't, you could actually run into problems. So let's go ahead and do what it says. Click there to view the available updates. If you had cleared this, you can bring it up down here too, okay? See where my mouse is wiggling down there at the bottom? So just click on this little window and it'll bring up their installer. And I'm gonna clear this thing because we, we don't need to know that we've changed our time zone. And here's your pop shop. Go ahead and click installed. And you should see your updates. Kind of cool. One thing Pop! OS does very, very well is their updating and their way of telling you that it has updates. It, they do really, really well. I really like Pop! OS in general. It's a great operating system, works wonderfully. So as you can imagine, we're just gonna click update all. There's no sense in getting granular here. So just click update all and let it do its thing. And again, I'll shut up while it uh, does the updates and then I'll come back later. We'll see you in a bit. Let's just reboot after all that installation stuff. So we go over here to the corner and click the power button. Click on that and select restart and let's let it reboot. Well, take a second. One thing about Pop! OS, it does a really good job in a virtual machine of rebooting quickly. So we'll click on my name again. We'll log in again. Nothing shocking. There we go. And looking good. And just wanted to say, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. The usual YouTube thing, please. That helps. Make me a comment or something down there uh, in that comment section to help the algorithm. You know how that algorithm is too, if you've been doing the YouTube gig for a while. And of course, if you would like to help me continue making more and more of these videos, because I really would like to be able to switch to doing this as my full-time job, please feel free to hit up my Patreon. Uh, I only ask a dollar a month. There's obviously more levels if you wish, but a dollar a month would be great. And uh, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll make sure that at the very least, you will get your name at the end of the uh, videos as credit. But I will make a link in the description below to my Patreon as well. And I do really appreciate your time. And I wanted to thank you for coming by and uh, checking out the video. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.